Hello and welcome back to Barley Spring. Right, we are essentially continuing on from where we left off last episode, uh, which I have to admit is recorded right after the last episode, uh, because I'm just too excited to play this map. So I uh, am excited to get your feedback from episode one, uh, but if anything, it might be implemented in episode three. Right, well, as I say, uh, be, or said before rather, we are going to empty out, there we go, all of the grain from the harvester. And now I am going to actually just store it in the silo instead of with the chickens and ducks because they seem to be full up anyways on all those things. Uh, we'll just leave that there. We mustn't forget the header is also still in uh, the field. So we'll get that sorted afterwards. The plan for now uh, is to dump off this grain into our silo here. So we'll see. We might have to reverse in. Actually, I'll try that first. Just to see how it kind of works. Let's see. Right. Get it in there. And that's absolutely fine. I'm sure we could have probably turned around in here, but I don't mind. Right, so we can get the grain unloaded. Absolutely brilliant. And there we have it. So we'll have a very quick look at what we do have. 1,820 litres of wheat in our silo. So what we'll do is actually for now, I might just leave this uh, set up right here because the next thing we are going to do is cut some grass. Now, I was going to bale the straw rate right away, but I do actually want to get into the fields and uh, get a sort of a head start on Maze Plus, but I do want to use the 5S. So we will hop into it, just get the uh, front loader detached. Oh yes, look at all these screens as well. Looks amazing. I did almost fully kit it out as well. Um, not full options on everything, but did want it to be uh, pretty fantastic. And I mean, it already is. It is absolutely amazing. Let's not crash into the wall straight away. <laughs> oh, wow, it's quite nippy as well, isn't it? Um, right, before we do actually crack on with the mowing, there is another thing I want to sort out. And I should have done this before we... Uh, harvested actually and that is to purchase our soil information for our fields that we do currently have right so now that we're attached there let's have a look at the precision farming menu now hopefully the yield usually this is all at 50 but I think because of our because of our um, what do you call it harvest it might have gone up. So let's purchase soil info, and this is perfect because it's literally all the fields we have. And it will cost us a fair amount, 6300 uh, but 72 samples it saves us from collecting ourselves. Let's have a look at the yield. Oh, brilliant. At least it shows the yield. So it's not perfect. It was about 75, 65, 80. Oh, brilliant. 80, even better. Um, out of 125, though, so... Right, let's have a look. So we do need to sort out loads of things, but it looks like all the other, uh, all of our uh, grass fields are quite well cared for. pH could probably be a bit better, but that's fine. Um, right, that's gone up already to 68, which is fantastic. Though it's all loamy sand, it's all rubbish soil, really, unfortunately. Uh, but we can make the most of it. So we'll hop into. Right, is there a gate there? No, for some reason I thought there was a gate there. But there is not. Um, let's have a look. Which field? Let's get a look at that on there. Oh, it looks great. Absolutely brilliant. Let's have a look. We will... You know what? We could even start with 68 because we are right here and the gate's already magically open. So we'll just hop right into this one to get a start on as well. See, this is something that could actually be a crop field. You know, something like soybeans, where you get a bit more crop for a smaller space. Or sugar beets as well, because we do need sugar beets. Actually, yeah, this is probably perfect for sugar beets. Um, anyways, let's have a look. Without conditioner, we want to change that to with conditioner. So, 
potentially in the future I will do without um, basically it adds an extra step to the drying process of your grass turning it to hay uh, in this case we are going to do it with the conditioner to try it out because we're also doing uh, silage so if you do fresh grass you do have to fiddle with it to get your uh, silage but in this case when you have conditioning uh, mowing set on you do not have to worry about that um, so we'll just get started, we'll go along this way, we'll, we'll sort out the, the proper way of, of doing the mowing as well, eventually. But we will start lowering that down, and uh, fire it up, we'll see what happens. So I'm not entirely certain, because we can't tell until we're actually loading it up. But um, here's to hoping that this is, in fact, conditioned grass. Look at that, nitrogen is perfect, the pH is good. Um, just happy days all around and I mean there is options as far as checking to see what kind of uh, grass we do have now according to the readme for maize plus this is conditioned grass which is exactly what we want because we want to be able to put it into the pit so that's what that's our first goal is to get some silage created and uh, and then we can eventually get some hay done as well and then uh, the cows and everyone will be very happy for it. Well, primar primarily the cows at least. Uh, but yes, this is a very nice quick field to just kind of get it started to see where, we're all, where we are with everything. I might even get it rowed up just to see what it seems like uh, in the loading wagon. But potentially we'll do a, a few cuts first on a few different fields. But this grass is very, very tall. Very well grown, I suppose you could say. Now. I can never remember. Am I going the wrong way? It feels alright. But uh, I feel like going the other way is incorrect. But I will go just to see how it feels going this way. But I think... I think it is... Uh, I mean, either way works. Whatever works best. But there is a proper way to do it. This does feel a bit better. Um, but for the outside headland, we had to kind of go the other way. Uh, but right, this is working, and we can eventually get a front mower as well. Um, I would like to see how well we do without it for the first little bit, um, because this mower is four and a half meters, which is pretty good. And I mean, granted, we are in a small field at the moment, uh, but when we do head up to one of the bigger fields, it would be nice to have that front mower, absolutely. Right, so we'll just crack on with this. This will be a fairly, fairly quick job to get this field done, as I've said. But uh, the other ones are a bit bigger. So I'd like to get this one done. This one, actually, we could do as hay uh, for the first one, because I'd like to do silage in the other bigger fields. So that's to say 63 and 64. I'm almost certain. The, far, the farthest field, the farthest grass field, I'm almost certain is... Um, is 64 so that'll be the one that we do prim primarily for, for silage and we'll keep that as oh hello little fiat there it's brilliant um, this one we can like I say could probably do hay because uh, it is a bit smaller and closer and then we don't have to uh, fuss with bales too far although we do have a nice square baler so that should make things a bit easier oh we don't have a bale trailer either but we shall get one when we need one right I'll just finish this up before we uh, pop to another field just wanted to see kind of how it went the first time the first cut if you will uh, and I think it went very well to be honest as long as I'm doing it correctly then uh, yeah happy days there right we'll shut that down hop into a nice first person so we can maneuver through and um, actually we should have a look here at the map just to make certain that all is well right 63 and 64 yeah those are the two sort of big well, I suppose 66 a bit bigger as well but we do need some hay so we'll figure it out the reason I want to do 64 sooner than later is to actually put a crop in so I reckon that's the one we're gonna do next so we'll head to field 64 and uh, get it cut and it will give us a good opportunity to see exactly uh, how we're going to get a crop in see this will be a bit tricky this one now because we do have a wide swing in the rear there. 
Oh, there we go. Perfect. Oh, this tractor is brilliant. Right, so that's the field we want to get in the future. That could be our main silage field f forever <laughs> if we get that big field there. Uh, but we are heading into this field for now. Oh, where's the handle? There we are. Or the latch, I suppose. Not really a handle, is it? Right, so we will start the cut here as close as we can do. But if we were to turn this to arable, which is definitely... Well, let's be honest, that's my plan. Um, we don't have to go all the way to the gate. We can come to here and kind of curve around. And then we have some room here to actually faff around with the, the harvester. Because we do need some room for that. Um, but as it stands... We're just focusing on getting this very, very tall and wild grass all cut up and ready for silage. Let's fire. Oh, nope, we need to. So we have shut it off, and as you can see there, we have a bit of grass that has been... It's darker. So if we go here, we have to turn on the conditioner every time. Mustn't forget that. So we'll lower it down again, fire it up, and as you can see, the grass should be a different color. Oh, hello. Oh right, no, it was right the first time. It looked very dark actually, the very first cut. But that's way darker, so we need... Right, now with can did, that's what we want. So as long as it's the colour of the first go... Now I need to check again. This is why, as I said, with Maze Plus I'm, I'm going to have to get used to it the first couple of goes. But yeah, this is definitely uh, fresh grass, which we cannot put into a pit, unfortunately. Um, I believe it can be tedded from fresh, but it might have to be tedded twice to make hay, because it would go, we would ted it from this to that, and then from that to semi-dry, I believe, and then to hay. But since we're using the conditioner feature on the mower, we can sort of skip this step and go straight to here, especially useful uh, for silage. Right, this will be a very beautiful field indeed to crack on in. Um, yeah, look at that. Especially when you get out in the open. Absolutely beautiful. We've got a little ruin there with the... Sort of, uh, what do you call that? The, the water thing? <laughs> the names escape me, I don't know. I'm just too, again, just too excited about this map still. Um, who knows, a third episode might be recorded right away. But I'll I'll try and I'll try not to because I would like to get some feedback as well and uh, you know any sort of help on whatever it is that I seem to be struggling with um, and that should be good yeah we will come in here and uh, well yeah we'll tidy it up when we do our rounds again but for now this will be fine it goes pretty close to the edge there ah oh, brilliant all right well we'll crack on with a time lapse for this and. Uh, I would like to hop into... Oh, hello. Get these sections done properly. Again, we will probably come back around and, and get that outside uh, headland cleared up as well. Um, but I would like to actually hop into that farthest field as well to get the silage grass ready. Uh, well, grass cut for silage. Um, but for now, we'll crack on with the time lapse.
Right, well, we're just about done our first grass cutting, well, second, sorry. Um, but yes, the first grass cutting time lapse. Now, I think that went quite well. One thing I won't do in the other fields is go all the way to the edge of the field. Uh, I guess for this one it was fine because I am going to cultivate it up. But for the future, I don't think I'll go that far out. Um, if anything, I'll probably go up to about here. And when I drill, I will also go only to about here. Because I feel like having a bit of a headland of grass would be fine, especially with this bit. It's all wonky and wobbly. Um, so yeah, I will be very conscientious of that when I am cultivating and drilling in here. Um, now, I was going to head to the other field there, the far one, and get it cut as well. But I do want to break up the cutting sessions. I don't want to do them all at the same time. So what we'll do now is we'll head back to the yard. We'll drop off the mower here and then... I suppose we'll... Well, you know what? Let's let's try the tedder. We'll, we'll get into that small field again and we'll get it teddied up and see how well that goes. And then we'll need to row it. Um, and then we'll also need to row our uh, other field for the silage. Now, I might rearrange the way things are here, because I shouldn't really... Uh, yeah, I'll tuck it away. I'll tuck it away proper for now. I could have just left it. I was going to leave in that small yard, because we know we're going to need it loads anyways. Uh, also, I think, I think I am going to look into purchasing the front mower for that, the c the coon the coon front mower, uh, because, yeah, we've got loads of grass fields, and while that was fairly quick, I reckon we need a bit bigger for a mowing setup. I think it would just be more appropriate, considering all the fields we have uh, that are grass, and that will remain grass, especially the massive one when we do get to it. Right, so we'll get this unfolded. Is there any fancy features for this? Tedder stage base game conditioned, semi-dry, or hay. Oh no. So I suppose base game would turn it to hay, conditioned would turn it to conditioned from um, fresh. I would assume semi-dry would be the next stage from this. So we could semi-dry it or do hay. I'm going to try base game because that's what it was at. So had I not checked it, what would it do? Now, I'm almost certain that that is in fact hay, but we will have a quick... Yeah, it does look like hay, that does. Right. Um, oh, you know what else I did not check was actually the sails. So let's very quickly just have a look at... Oh, that's just so cheeky. Right, I do apologise, by the way, in the last episode, I did put a bit of a, uh, a, a bit of a correction in the episode before, but uh, I did want to just correct that the Marshall Slurry Spreader is by Eric, not by 4D. 4D does make many, many other things, though. Uh, we'll just very quickly go to our slurry tankers. I was on about, actually, uh, these, this lot here, by 4D, which we will be upgrading to fret not. Uh, and then the trailer as well, I was thinking of the cane trailer, which is by uh, 4D modding and the dually trailers as well. Uh, but it, we do have the, where is it, the West by ARM team. So I just wanted to correct those couple of uh, instances there, as I do apologize to those modders as well. It is, they are fantastic and very appropriate for this uh, map as well. Right, we are creating hay. So we will crack on with this as well. This shouldn't take all that long. Um, I don't want to do too, too many time lapses here in the uh, in a short period of time, but we do have to get all this done. Uh, another thing we are going to do is bale. So I would like to get some baling done as well this, uh, this episode, uh, for the hay especially. And the loading wagon, well, that'll be for this silage. So we'll just at least do a, a pass here and see. Um, <coughs> I don't mind the size of this equipment. Um, but yeah, oh, you know what I didn't do is look at the rest of the sales page. I just looked at the one and then... Right, so, no, that's for logging. This is interesting, actually, because we do need uh, a straw blower. But can this, can this work with square bales? I suppose we could buy it and then 
figure it out from there. Hmm. Because that's fairly good price as well. That's half off. Actually, you know what? I might be a bit impulsive, and I might I might buy that. Twenty three months and. Well, we're going to need one anyways, right? So let's do it. Let's absolutely do it. I know, as I said, I know it's a bit cheeky, um, but it should be fine. Here, we'll just do a very quick customize. Uh, we'll go what Pro Chop <laughs> and Anderson One Five Zero. I do like when there's a bit of customization on the uh, on the license plates there. So we will purchase that, and uh, it's waiting for us at the shop, which is uh, down here so we'll go and collect that later on we really don't need it just yet but it was a good price and uh, potentially impulsive um, but it's purchased so right we've just about finished our headland here of the hay oh hey headland hey hey it's a headland I don't sorry <laughs> right we will uh, we should probably get to where there's no hay already uh, right we'll crack on with this should be fairly quick and then we'll go straight to the um, the rower as well. We'll come back in here, we'll row it up, and then we'll take the rower to our other grass field and get the silage grass, well the 2B silage grass, uh, all rowed up as well. Well, that should do it for this field. Uh, now, yeah, this this will definitely make a much better crop field than a grass field. It's just a bit too it's all it's a bit awkward to be honest. Um, now, if I was doing sugar beets in here, it might potentially be problematic depending on the harvester we use. Um, but it would probably potentially actually be a very small scale sugar beet operation depending on what we need. It could be potatoes as well. We shall see. However, I will... So I was going to start the rowing in the other field, but I really would actually like to uh, <laughs> to try out our class baler. I've never used the quadrant... Hello, mate! Uh, to use this baler. Now, where is... Where have I left the other... Oh, right, by the grain silo. Couldn't remember where I left the other Massey. So we'll just go and collect that, and uh, we'll tuck the trailer away. Actually, I'm just going to tuck it in here. This is a... put the, the cover on. And uh, I think this is a perfect little place for it. Get it all tucked in. Fine there for now. Brilliant. So yes, we'll get hooked up to the class of Baylor, and we'll see you in the small field. All right. Well, we'll get that lowered down. I think we have to unfold it as well. There we go. And we'll fire it up. And now, as you can see, we are, in fact, collecting hay, and we will collect the little bits that we miss afterwards. I'm hoping... What is going on? Hmm. Oh, there we go. All right, that was a bit strange for a moment. Uh, right, we are collecting our hay. Now, I'm hoping that the pickup, it seems to be very, very wide. So that is quite good. Absolutely amazing, actually. Here, we'll uh, get into first person, just go around the corner. I do like doing bailing in first person, uh, if possible, which usually I find it to be a bit easier because you can actually line up quite nicely. That is, as long as you are collecting the hay appropriately, not missing bits. 
So now it should just start to pop out. Beautiful. There we go. Round the bend. Now, as I said, I will probably have mit, uh, <laughs> bits missed, rather, uh, because of how close I went to the fence as well, which is a bit frustrating, I know, but uh, it will keep it in first. Um, but uh, that should be fine. As I say, this will be ploughed up, all cultivated, but most likely I'll use it for sugar beets. Unless there's a field nearby that when time comes for sugar beads we can buy it and it is a great yield and all that but we'll have to see when that time comes. Because yeah we're going to get maybe four bales. Oh you know I didn't even check if we can change the bale size. We can do. Right so this is it's standard at 220 so I might as well keep 220 bales for now which are 7,000 litres for hay, it seems. Um, but I will switch it to the biggest size the next time we do hay. Uh, well, actually, we need to do the straw. So for the straw, we'll definitely do the bigger size bales and see what they come out to. Now, I will have to clean up a bit of the hay here. And uh, it almost makes sense to go and cut some more hay first before we uh, before we do the straw otherwise we'll either gain uh, an extra bale of straw or we'll lose a bale of hay so I reckon that might oh wow I've missed lots of bits right I'm gonna tidy this up and then uh, we'll see you in a second all right so we have ended up with one bale um, and 70% of another bale now I don't want to necessarily do a whole other grass uh, field. This is such a long thing. I'm going to try and pop this bale out just here. At least the one. And we can yeah, deal with that later. Let's see here. Just unload that. Oh, it's... Oh, right. We've got... We do have two. Okay, brilliant. So that's good at least. We'll just put that there. This third bale... I will go to the straw now, actually. Uh, because I am curious to see if it'll just give us an extra hay bale. Because I reckon at this point we need more hay than straw. So if I can sacrifice the, the remaining 30% for hay, I would much rather do that. Sacrifice the straw. So we'll take this nice and wide. There we are. Might as well start right here. Now, here's to hoping that this will work, so we'll unfold it again and stern it on. But I will change this now to 240. So, please give us hay. Don't change to straw. I guess we'll find out momentarily. Ah, it seems like it will stay as hay, which is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Ah, wonderful. And now we're going to make big size uh, straw bales. I'm curious to see as well how big in fact they are because it would be nice to know how different. Right, I'll just go around like this. We'll get the headland done first and hopefully the bales pop out in an appropriate place. Right, lower that back down and we'll hop back into first person here. And uh, we'll see. Oh, these are going to be massive bales, eh? Wow, wicked. So about 9,000 litre bales. I do have full intention of uh, upgrading the class baler to the wonderful 4D modding Heston baler. But that will be in time because it is quite pricey. And uh, yeah, that will definitely come in the future. Right, we'll get this first bale completed. And, uh, wow. We, I think we'll get a fair amount of uh, straw bales still. So we'll crack on with this uh, in a time lapse. We'll do a bit first person, third person, nice bit. I know we've got uh, a fair amount of time lapse going on so far. But uh, it does get more content into the episode. Which is helpful, of course. Um, 
and especially in the early days, because let's be honest, I mean, there's so much on in this August, because everything's ready to uh, to harvest, the grass, the, the crop was ready, everything's ready, and then there will be the slow times, and when that time comes, uh, well then there will be probably less time lapses than that, so we shall carry on with the time lapse. The end of the straw collection has occurred. There we are. Now it is a bit unfortunate because we have half a bale remaining, um, but we did get mm, seven, nine. It should be nine. Uh, let's just unload it and see. Eight, nine. Okay, perfect. So we have seven straw bales one two three four five six uh seven no 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 we have three right three and six three hay and six straw but mind you the straw bales are nine thousand liters so what i'll do now is uh do a quick collection get as much of the uh, extra bits as i can i know it won't fill the bale but i will at least uh, get it done uh and then we'll head back to the farm park up the baler and then uh, move on Alright, so as you can see the baler is all put back and uh, we are just going to connect here to the front loader. I will we'll just leave the manure fork there for now. What we're going to do is we are going to head down to the shop uh, for a couple of reasons actually. Here, we'll just get our beacons on, get ready to go. Uh, but we are going to sell this bale fork because it is for round uh, round bales and uh, we are doing square bales so as nice as this is we just don't need it uh, there are two other things I do have intentions of purchasing at the shop uh, and we will see what they are when we get there so we'll make our way out and uh, get to our nice little gate here hopefully oh I've left the gate open once again I swore I shut the gate Hmm. Well, maybe Sparky's learnt how to open it now. Anyways, we'll keep that shut for now, and uh, we will head on to the road here, head down to the shop, and we'll see you there. Alright, so there is our straw blower, which we will actually be leaving here, because we won't be able to bring this with us uh, this particular trip, but we will leave that there. And we'll just get backed up here, and let us get this sold now i need to remember where there we are perfect so 1840 which is absolutely fine we will sell it for that price and we'll go into the shop and we'll collect a spike an actual bale spike um i will opt for let's have a look here so we do have the standard one this is very nice and all but i am going to opt for the arm team mod uh, for a couple of reasons. One is because we can get the four spikes all the way across, which is very handy. I feel it's just a bit more secure. Not necessary, but 100 extra pounds. And, nice thing is we have the option uh, to convert it to a wheel loader setup. So, at all skid steer, or telehandler, all the options. But for now, we do want the uh, front loader. As for the main color, I think that's fine. They might charge us, yeah. So that and the red will fit the Massey beautifully. So we'll purchase that for £800. That is purchased. Fantastic. And there it is. Right. So we will actually just quickly connect to that first so we can get out of the way for the next items that we have to purchase, uh, which will be for uh, baling as well which is to say a bale trailer so we've got that hooked up and I do like as well that it uh, that you actually have to unfold it 
uh, versus having to put it down like I was when I was driving so I can leave it up which is fantastic uh, and the items that we do have to purchase actually uh, one is going to go on the front here and one is going to go on the back so let's go to the menu any new sales we're not doing uh, sugar cane so we don't need that we will head down to bale trailers not oh, low loaders no we don't need low loaders we need bale loaders and there's many many good ones eventually I would like to look into uh, one of the uh, 4D modding uh, uh, not too sure how to pronounce that brown 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 Ugh. please correct me if I'm wrong probably am uh, they're a bit pricey for us now um, but I was looking also at these ones uh, also 4D modding with a 20 foot here the Marshall trailer but I am gonna opt for the Marston because uh, it is a bit cheaper that's a bit more vintage I suppose you could say uh, we can go for right so that yeah we'll just get it used I mean it doesn't matter really it, it looks fine like that don't know what custom will do oh fully custom right uh, now that's fine we'll go we'll go oh what's modern though oh I see that's nice but no we will keep it as base as possible we can always upgrade it in the future uh, we'll keep the one front grill on. Oh, we have to anyways. Uh, beacon, yeah, go on then. Get beacon on the bottom. Um, I will put it on the left. Kind of like it on the left there. And we'll get this very quickly changed over to... I don't know. Marston trailer. I'll just put 1993. There we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah, f £4,600 is very hard to beat that, and we can always make adjustments in the future. So that is one thing we need to purchase. The other thing I want to purchase is the front mower for the Coon setup, because we do have the 4411, which is massive at 4.4 meters, but we can extend that by 3.1 meters for under 10,000 pounds. Eventually we could maybe even look at that and have those two together, but I think this is sufficient. So we'll purchase that for 9,500 and all uh, oh, right, go around this way and we should be able to connect everything up very nicely. Right, there we are. Hopefully this isn't too too heavy. Hopefully little 5S can manage. I mean it is the Dyna 6 with the 145 horsepower so it shouldn't struggle at all. Um, it should even be able to deal with the bale uh, carrying as well, not just the, the loading. Um, but we will probably mosey out this way make sure no one's coming. Perfect. And uh, right, we'll head to the farm drop off the front mower and then we'll head in to the field collect our bales. All right, we are in the field now. We've made it without much fuss as far as gates and all that. Uh, so I will detach the trailer and oh, can keep that up. Mustn't forget that. And uh, lovely that we have a little bit of an extra bit to this loader so that we should be able to try and get some first person loading in. Uh, we should be able to stack them very nicely um, and hopefully the rear wheel weights do help where we can load two at once. If not, we can definitely just uh, we can definitely do one at a time. But there we go. Hopefully that's nice and level. That looks pretty good. That's im that's impressive. No no rear weight, but just the wheel weights. They do make quite a difference. That is that is amazing. That's really that's eighteen thousand liters. Those bales are not light at all, and this seems to be having no struggles. Right. I don't know if we should load the front or the back first, but uh, well, we only have a few anyways, so just put them like that. A few for now. We'll definitely have more in the in the future. Especially when we're making hay, we're going to need loads of hay. Right, we'll just put those there. That is very impressive. I'm very pleased about that. And we'll get another couple of bales. 
Oh, I'm just so impressed at how versatile this little 5S really is. I'm very, very impressed by it. I was never I was never 100% certain that the wheel weights made that much of a uh, an actual difference, but I'm glad that I opted for them because they're impressive. <laughs> very, very impressive. Right, well, I will quit rambling. We'll get the rest of these loaded in a cheeky little time lapse. Right, we'll load the final bale on. Uh, so I thought it was 7,000 litres, but it's 7,250. Oh, uh, which is fine. That's 250 litres more than I reckon we would get out of it. But look at that. That is fairly impressive, I would say, for the fact that the Massey can, in fact, lift two of these bales at once. Don't really need to strap them all that intense, but we will fold up our bale spike and at least connect here to our trailer and get ready to load them into the shed. But that will be in the next episode. That is amazing. Oh, I do like the square bales. I'm glad I opted for the, the square baler this time round. Different uh, sort of change of pace. Uh, as you can see as well, our precision farming information there, we do have to work in the fields. We've got lots on, lots on. I'm very pleased that we're at three times in August uh, because we have lots to do, <laughs> uh, which we will continue in the next episode. So until then, thank you so much for watching. Please do take care and bye for now.